Hi everyone, Linda Israel here. Happy St. Patrick's Day. I thought I would show you a quick tutorial on putting together a junk journal using the Lucky Little Clover journal kit. It's a digital download by Calico Collage. I've printed a page as a cover on linen cardstock and then this will be the inside then I've printed several of the pages generally I like to print three digital pages for my kit that I'm putting together for a journal and then the other pages I'll use seven different random pages throughout including things like I have old book pages. I've got a piece of handmade paper here. I've got a gel print or two, some mop-up papers. So I'm going to do a little bit of everything with this little journal. One of these pages I'm going to make into a pocket page. And then I've got the ephemera to fussy cut out. So I love all these green pieces that we have here. I'll also be using some stencils that I designed. So I have the four leaf clover stencil as an option in my shop. And then I hand drew these designs and these are a Celtic wallpaper one and two and we'll use those. Well, I'm going to go ahead and fussy cut these elements and then I'll come back and I'll get started on putting together some pages for you. All right, I fussy cut a few things out and I've picked out a few items from my stash. What I'm going to do first is I have a page out of a composition notebook and if you didn't know you can go to the center of a composition notebook and unstitch it and then you'll have a great big sheet of lined paper. If you fold those in half you can trim them down be five and a half by eight and a half and it'll fit inside your journals especially if you're making them like I do out of eight and a half by eleven sheets of paper or if you have it different sizes you've got the whole page to work with well what I'm going to do is we're going to use a stencil on here and I'm going to use it with Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist so I've got the four leaf clover stencil that I offer in my shop and I'm going to take my little piece of paper and lay it into a box I find that if I use a box when I'm spraying Tattered Angels, then it keeps me from having to clean my work surface up because Tattered Angels does have a little bit of overspray. So I've got Blarney here. It's a really uh, nice shade of green. Mine, I happen to have some little BBs in it uh, to help mix up that mica because there's a lot of gold mica. I'm going to shake this up and then spray across my page. I've got another sheet of paper here that I'm going to use as a mop up to mop up the tattered angels on top. I go ahead and I spray the other side and then that way both sides are decorated in a sense and I can use this in my journal as a journal page. So I'm going to set that aside for a moment and I'll flip over the notebook paper and spray the back side of it. Now, if you spray it a lot, you'll saturate it and it will take a while to dry. So you can speed up that process by using a heat tool. And because I want to make sure that it's dry before I go into the next, I'm going to dry it, but we'll speed through it so you don't have to watch the whole thing. Okay, I had to get everything set up the way I wanted it to be. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I have the flowering branch in my shop from Beeline Designs. And I've got some archival black ink and jet black. And I found that I really like this look when I do it across the corner of a page or across the page. I'm going to come in here and just rotate my page just a little bit and stamp this little flowering branch. I just like the way that looks. It kind of gives just a little decorative touch there. And I'm going to do that on all four panels. Whenever you use an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and fold it in half, you end up with four pages. All right, so I'm going to repeat that over on this side. You can go differently if you so choose. I've got a piece of white cardstock here and what I'm going to do now is stamp one of the phrases that I have here. I think it's a member of Nature's Walk. I'll have it in the description box. Anything that I show throughout this video, if I kind of mention it, I have a link to it in the description box below. You can also visit my blog. And by the way, if you're watching, I appreciate you watching. Please uh, subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. And then you know, and I say this on a lot of videos, if you enjoy what somebody does online, share it with your friends so they will get to see whatever it is that you love. You never know what you might inspire.
All right, so I put, in every walk with nature, one receives more than he seeks. And that's uh, John Muir. So I stamped that with the archival ink. This is, again, a Beeline Designs. And I'm just going to rip it. This is a kind of a heavy cardstock. I just happen to have a piece laying here on my desk. And I was like, okay, I'll just use that. <laughs> sometimes I get a different paper out for different things. But, you know, sometimes we need to use up what we have on our desk. All right, so I just kind of ripped around that edge. I'll save this piece. Maybe we'll use it somewhere else. And I did that again with a bunch of other sayings that I thought would be good. And I was going to color them before I got on the live stream and I forgot, or the video, and I forgot. So I'm just going to speed through this where I'm going to use some Distress Oxide in Forest Moss. I like using all the different shades of green with this kit. So go crazy. Get, get out all the different shades of green of ink or tattered angels or papers that you have and just have fun with it. So I just use a blending tool to apply that. And I think what I want to do now is I want it to have a little bit darker of a edge to it. So I'm going to get out my Distress Ink Walnut Stain and go around the edges one more time. See how that's making a difference? It's a little bit darker just on that edge. All right, so I did all those pieces. And I have out this piece of sheet music, a hymnal, and I thought I would use some of it. I'm going to go ahead and tear the page apart. And my thought was, do I want to put it up here at the top with a little bit of music? I don't know, maybe a, just a little piece sticking out there. And then I've got one of these little clovers that we could put on here. I don't know. Just I just thought I'd just play around with the, how that looks. And I think I like that. I think what I'll do is just kind of replace each saying. I've got four of these. I went ahead and I went into my uh, editing software on my computer and just cropped out these four or three sizes of little four-leaf clovers. And then I pasted them back into a new eight and a half by 11 document three times so I could print a whole sheet of the shamrocks because I just, or clovers, I just wanted extras, but I didn't want all the other things as well. So that's a tip. You know, when you get those digital downloads, you can crop it and duplicate that little element if you want to use more of it because you've got the file right there. You can edit it as you need to be able to use for your kit. And I just thought I'd share that with you. Crop them or resize them and have fun with that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put some Distress Inks on the book pay or uh, music, and then I'll paste them all down. All right, so I've got some Aline's Tacky Glue, and I'm going to put down the little music piece first. Now, if you want, you could put this onto another piece of paper and make a pocket, but I just thought it would be pretty as an embellishment on the page. Kind of a cluster embellishment made on the page instead of in advance. So I'm just going to repeat that on the other pages. I think that looks pretty cute. I've got out some washi tape and I was trying to decide if I wanted to use some. And I think I'm kind of looking at it. I think maybe I'll do this. I've got this little dots. Let's see what this looks like if we put it down here on the corner. Just kind of adds another little texture to it. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of rip little pieces and put across the bottom of the page. I'm trying to use up some of this washi tape I have. I really like how this has turned out. I hope you do too. So there was using a composition notebook, rubber stamps. We used some of the digital image as well as some what I call junk, an old hymnal, and then some washi tape. All right, so let's set this one aside and make the next page. All right, this is the mop-up page that we made when we were working on the journal line page, the composition journal page. So I thought we'd do somewhat similar what we did before. I've got the page up here. I've got this little leaf branch, and I've got peeled paint. So I'm going to ink this up, and we're going to stamp it in the corner here. And then I'm going to ink it up again, and then kind of rotate the stamp a little bit so you get a little different look and then go across the top. I'm going to repeat that on the other corner. 
and I have stamped the other side as well so that is ready to go next I've got uh, the scrap that we had on the last page and I've got one of the quattro let's see, what is it journal journal Qu quartet there's four different journal stamps so this is one of those and I'm going to stamp it on this scrap of paper and then I'm going to rip it out I'll use some distress inks around the edges and I've got the uh, forest moss as well and then I think what I'm going to do next is I've got I've got some more music pieces like we did on the other side and I think I want to use some washi tape in here so I'm kind of looking at this maybe if I rip it on both ends that would look kind of neat if it was placed down before the journal line journal so I'm going to glue down this piece here which is just sheet music that I've gone around the edge with distress inks okay so I tore the edge just a little bit and then I'm going to tear that and I think what I want to do is just kind of place it and then place this over the top of it so it's just kind of peeking out just a little bit I've stamped the other four of the same uh, set so I'm just going to repeat that on the next page here so there is our next journal page what do you think I kind of like the again the little collage here in the top and I'm okay that the next page looks the same and then later on you'll see this page and there's still room to doodle or add photos so there is another page so let me get the next one set up and I'll show you what we're gonna do okay at the beginning I said I was gonna show a handmade paper I'm hoping as the weather gets better here that I'll be able to do a handmade paper session but years and years and years ago we would recycle paper flower bits thread flowers or I said flowers or glitter all kinds of things and make our own paper so I decided that we'll decorate this using some of the kit and other elements from my stash so right off the bat in the kit is this little piece I have it upside down but there's this little piece here and I thought it might look kind of neat to add a strip from one of the composition notebooks this was a coffee dyed piece of paper and the word blarney so we're going to put some distress inks around that outside edge and then i'll glue all these pieces down on top of this okay so now that i've made this piece it could become a belly band or it could become a side pocket and i think what i want to do is glue it down on this side so it kind of gives this edge a little bit more stability because it's handmade paper it could tear when you're flipping through the journal so maybe protecting one side would be a good idea and then just to kind of keep it eclectic i have a postcard this is a photo that i took in my garden last year and then norella of calco collage went in and added digital words and some of them have some mixed media pieces to them and i just like the green on here so i thought a little pop of color i'm not going to push it all the way down just in case this is still wet all right so over on this side let's see what we've got here oh yeah okay so here I have a junior legal notepad so I just tear it off tore off one page just grammar y'all uh, tore off one page and I thought what we do is maybe do some stenciling again so I'm gonna grab my stencil box here I'll put it this way because it'll make a pattern in the border of this page and I can use it somewhere else I like doing that sometimes all right, so I've got the Celtic Wallpaper 1, and I've got Blarney Tattered Angels. Well, I've changed my mind. I want to do a different color because we did Blarney on the others. This is Hemlock Green. I don't remember if I've added this to my shop or not yet, but you can get it at Canvas Court Brands if uh, you can't find it in my shop, and I may add it soon. I this may be clogged so i'm just going to take a little bit of alcohol and spritz in there sometimes that's enough to unclog it nope and i'm going to look for a pin and see if i can't unclog it that way when all else fails i go and get a different sprayer because at the moment i don't want to spend the time to wash it and let it soak so i'm just going to change the sprayer out i'll mess with that some other time 
it's going to have a little bit of Blarney in it because it was a, a sprayer from Blarney. All right, so I've sprayed around the outside edge of that as well as the inside. I'm going to grab another sheet of paper just for mopping up purposes because I like that I can get journal pages ready to use. So now we've transferred that pattern onto this page that we can use later on. And then we've got this page and I've got this page that kind of has a pattern on it. All right, I think I want to apply some Distress ink around the edge so that'll kind of give this a little more dimension. I want to stamp up here so I'm going to move my paper out of the way and I've got this Beeline Design stamp. I'm going to put it right up here. Keep your face in the sunshine and you cannot see the shadow. It's what the flowers do. So I thought that would look kind of cool right there. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this piece down to my uh, handmade paper. Now we've created a little writing space. Okay, I've got this little um, corner piece that comes in the kit and I think that would look good right there. I might, I'm trying to decide. Yeah, I think that's what I'll do. I'm just going to go ahead and glue this down as a little corner tuck spot. I've got this little card that I'm going to put here and then this is a card that I had left over from another project. I believe it's when uh, So She Did, I made a few journal cards and these were left over so they had enough green in them. I thought it would look good in here so I'm going to put that on this side. All right we're going to flip this over and decorate the other side. Over here, I've, it's going to be quite easy. This happened to be something that a friend sent me. I have a bunch of wonderful friends that every once in a while, I'll get a little care package and it'll have, you know, torn off pages like this. It'll have um, telephone notes or that kind of stuff that is blank that somebody had stashed away and they just started tearing off sheets and sharing them. So I love that kind of randomness. I don't have very much of it, so I don't get to use a whole lot, but it's kind of fun. So look at your, you know, papers a little bit differently whenever you're getting ready to throw something out. Maybe it'll be something that you can use. All right, so this was in the kit, and I thought that would look kind of cute down here in the corner as a little tuck spot. So I'm just going to put a little lines on the edges to make a corner tuck spot. And then I found uh, this that said St. Patty, and I thought it would be kind of cute if we put it at the top like it's a St. Patty statement. All right, for this side, I have an index card, and then I've got some of the elements from the kit. Well, this is, you know, stark white. What do we want to do with this? I think what we'll do today is let's let's spray it with some Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist. I think that's what I want to do. I'm going to lay it in the spray box here. I'm going to mist it with Blarney, just a little, without a stencil. And then I'm going to lay a stencil on top and stencil with the hemlock groves. It's a little bit darker. I'm going ahead and doing the whole page because that'll give us a pattern that we can use in this journal or I'll find some way to do something with it. Creates another page that creates my background. I got this page now. I'm going to save it as well. This is going to go up here. I'm going to dry it with my heat tool and then I'll touch up the edge with some distress ink. All right, so this is an index card. This kind of got some good body to it. I think what I'm going to do is make this a little tuck spot that if whoever gets this journal, or if I keep it and journal in it, I have another thing where I can put something that doesn't already have an occupied pocket, if you will. So I just made this what can be a tuck spot up here. I like that. Okay, and then this is going to go down here on the bottom. So I'm going to center that up and it's going to be a pocket. And I think I want to put this guy, make sure it's not over too far. I'll put him right about there. And then that way, if someone had a phrase or, you know, wanted to put a little picture right there, there's still a little bit of room. And I may only just kind of glue down one side in case there's a, another thing that they want to stick inside there. I'm sure I didn't go over too far. And then we've got this that can go in here. And I've got another piece of this uh, kit that says Salante. So I'll put that up there. 
Lots of goodies. So another card out of the kit over here. I did get us some overspray, but that's okay. It just kind of adds to the charm. And this one will go here. This goes there. All right, so there is another journal page made. Let me get set up for the next one. This time I've got a page that looks like it's for a ledger for uh, hourly, maybe bookkeeping for employees. And I folded it in half. And I think what I want to do is on this side, I'm going to use the corner pieces that come in the kit. They're not really directional in my opinion. They could go this way or this way. And because this page is so not as wide, I think I'm going to rotate it up this way and just glue them down. So when you see this in the kit, you'll want to cut it out and then score on these edges. And then you'll have these little flaps. Here's where we're going to apply the glue. Okay, I've decided I want to add some stenciling. So I've got out the shamrock or, or four leaf clover stencil. I'm just kind of placing it on here. And I've got forest moss. Let me see if that's the color up I want. I may not want that color. Let's see. Now that's too dark. Let me find a different color. Okay, I've got uh, shabby shutters distressed ink. And I've got one of these blending tools. And these are a makeup brush that I found on Amazon. I have a link to them if you want to get your own. So I'm just going to kind of lightly come in here and not really make a super strong image, just a light image. You can see it's just a real faint image on there. I'm going to go ahead and do the other side while I've got this out. So just added a subtle pattern into the background. Kind of cool, huh? All right, and these are going to be the journal cards that are going to go in the pockets on this side. And let's flip this over. On this side, I thought it might be kind of cool. I used some scraps left over whenever I was designing the pages, and I thought it might be neat if we put these as a belly band. So I'm going to glue these strips. I just cut them the same height as the journal page, whatever it may be. And about, oh, an inch wide to whatever you want, really. I mean, a, a quarter of an inch is really too thin. It's too flimsy. You know, half an inch is okay. That's about what this piece in the center is. And then this darker piece is an inch wide. So it gives you a nice little base to work with. I've used, this is a book page that has circles on it. That was a piece of cardstock. You could use lace. On top of paper, you could sew it together. There's really no wrong way to do this. <clears throat> so those are going to go here. And then I've got these shamrocks, four-leaf clovers. And I'm just going to glue them on top of that band. So if it, you not you want to mark where you want to uh, glue. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll kind of make a line like that. And then I can place the glue in here and know that I'm not getting it outside the area where it could stick where I don't want it to. There, so that piece glued together. I'm going to do the same thing with this piece over here. I've got a couple of journal cards that I cut to fit. I believe it's four by five inches, so they'll fit underneath here. And I grabbed Let Your Spirit Soar. It's a rubber stamp. We're going to stamp it with jet black. I'm going to kind of come down from the corner and put it right here. And I'm going to repeat it on this side as well. So I'm going to have two cards the same. <clears throat> and then I have a little bird silhouette. I thought that would look good right there. So it's a quick way to make a little journal card. And then this will go here. So now we have this little page decorated up. And you could add more to it if you want. But I thought this left us some room to write. You've got some journaling space. You've got a spot that you can add more to it. All right, let's move on to the next one. This is a gel print. It's a mop-up from a gel print where I had put down the paint, then put down a stencil, and then mopped up from that. And this was the resulting print on a eight and a half by 11 gel plate. So I thought what I would do with this is I grabbed the Celtic wallpaper two stencil and I've got some peeled paint 
Distress Ink and a blending tool. And I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and use this blending tool to apply the pattern to the back side. Oh, I like it. It just adds a subtle pattern on that back side. All right. I'm going to go ahead and fold this in half so I know where the... Well, no, I'm not. I'm going to apply some washi tape around the edges. That'll kind of cover up that white space where the gel plate didn't touch the paper. You can use washi tape like I did. Don't have washi tape. You could cut strips of paper that you painted. You could use some masking tape and mask it and then paint with acrylic paint. There's a lot of other options you can put there. So don't just think that whenever I show you something that you have to use that exact same item, kind of think outside the box. What else could I use in place of washi tape? What else could I use in place of? And see if that doesn't help your creativity a little bit. All right, so now I think what I've got is a belly band that I want to put over here. So this was from the kit as well as the shamrock, and I just cut a one and a quarter inch strip here. So I'm just going to glue these together. I'm going to go ahead and fold this in half so I know where the middle portion is. And then this belly band is going to be glued right here. I like the patterns that we've got going on. And I've got a journal card that will slide up under that band. So let's go ahead and decorate this side over here. <clears throat> what I've done is I took a page out of a Bible and I tore it to be about five inches wide so I could make it as a pocket. And then I folded it up just a little bit and applied some distress inks. I think what I want to do now is I want to spray it with some Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist. So I'm going to get out my box here and I want to spray this area and then back here just a little bit. And okay if it kind of runs and looks distressed as it does there. I'm going to dry this with a heat tool. Oh yeah, now we've got that nice color on here. So what I did prior to coming on here, I took a dictionary page and found where it said Irish and just so happened it was at the top of the page. So I just tore that out and applied some distress inks. And I think I just want to glue that on top of my little pocket piece. So I'm gonna try to get it closer to this upper corner because I cut it out, but I didn't want to uh, cover up any of the words when I put down this little shamrock or four-leaf clover. I'm going to go ahead and glue right here to make this a pocket. And to make sure I don't get this too far over when I glue it down, I'm going to go ahead and glue this piece back here that's going to be my pocket to the page. Okay, if I put it like this, it kind of keeps this words open, so I got to put it back down the same way. I'm liking it. It looks pretty cute so far. Okay, so I've got this side and this side. So now let's do something within here. How about, let's do some rubber stamping. So let me grab a couple of stamps. I'll be right back. Okay, so I got a few stamps. Let me get me a scrap of paper here. And I'm going to begin with using the flowering branch right around the edge. So I think I'm going to start like this way and then kind of come down the side and maybe like that. I'm going to repeat that on this side. Okay. So next I have laughter is the best vacation and I'll stamp that over here. Yeah. And then, crash and burn, went to the floor. <laughs> Which says, if nothing ever changed, there would be no butterflies. And then I've got a butterfly stamp. And we'll just put that right there. I'm going to flip this back over to the other side. So now we need to put some journal cards in the pockets. This one's going to go over here. I've got... I've got some tags here. Let me grab my scrap of paper again. Because I think what I want to do 
is I've got my shamrock, so I'm going to place those over the top here. Let's see how I want to do this. <clears throat> Maybe like one in the corner there and there. I think that would look good. So I'm just going to grab peeled paint and put it right here in the corner. And while I've got that stencil down, I'm going to grab a pen. I've got this little felt tip pen. I'm going to go in here and just trace this really quick. Okay, so since I kind of messed up, I'm just going to go back around on purpose, just kind of making it messy. So there's the pattern that we get. All right, so I'm going to go back over here on this side and do the same thing. All right. So it kind of gives it a little quirky look to it. Kind of looks like I maybe have stitched it. And then I've got, uh, this is four leaf clover. So we put it kind of like that, maybe, coming out to the side. I've got a little scrap of music. Let's put that on there. I don't think I like the piece of paper. I think I'm just going to put it closer to the top like that. You know, sometimes you, you start a design and then you you don't like it. And it's okay to change your mind. This one says, kiss me, I'm Irish. So I thought these would look kind of cute in this back pocket. And then I have this little tag that we could put here in the front. So kind of repeat some of the same patterning. And... This is the other side. So we've got another page made. All right, so let me get the next one set up and I'll be right back. This is a page from a 2012 monthly planner uh, appointment book that was like in a three ring binder. And I was looking at it and I noticed that it was for March and it had the March tab. And I thought, well, why not just leave that on there? And I thought on this side, it's a good writing space. So I don't want to really clutter it up too much, but I do want to add a pattern. So I've got out the shamrock or four leaf clover stencil and I'm going to lay it in my box here. I'm going to grab hemlock grow cause green because I like that shade of green. You want to make sure you shake it up really well. And I always leave the lid on while I'm shaking. All right, so I'm going to go in here and spritz that. I kind of like the speckled look. I'm just grabbing another sheet of paper to lay on top to mop up. I like it. I'm going to go ahead and try to line this up on the other side. And actually, I don't even need to line it up. I'm just going to put it on there and just lightly spritz it. It's a little bit thicker paper than some of the other pages that I've used. All right, I think that looks pretty good because then it gives us a nice pattern on the page. Let's go ahead and work on this side. We'll get it finished. I've got a mixed media piece that I made a long time ago. I was testing things out, playing around with some texture paste, and I hardly play with it anymore because I like my journals as smooth as possible, and it does take a while to do the mixed media stuff sometimes, but just having a piece of it here, I, I'd like to do more experimenting, I think, in the future. I've got this little piece, and I've got one of the ephemera pieces, the little birdies, and I thought that'd be a cute little pocket. So I'm going to get my glue out and let's glue down the bird. And I've got another one, so I'm going to do the same thing over here. So these are going to go across the bottom here. So I'm just going to put glue on the bottom here. And I've got a couple little sayings. So maybe lucky charms. I'll do a shorter one. Let's do leprechaun over here. Like that. Okay, I think we need a little something at the top here. <clears throat> I've used this washi tape on other pages. Let's do a different washi tape. I've got this one. It's got like a little squiggles and maybe it's like some little berry branches. Yeah, I think something like that. So I'm going to rotate this around so I can get a hold of it. It just adds a little touch to the page. It's not a lot and it doesn't take up a lot of bulk. Then I've got, this is from a little ephemera kit that has butterflies that Norella offers. And I just like the botanicalness of it and the greens. And then this is from the kit. So that's going to go there. All right, so let's flip this over. And I've got a little square. We will put that down here in the corner. And then that way it can be a tuck spot if we have a journal card or something. 
I'll look to see if I've got extra. Maybe we'll put this butterfly. Yeah, maybe I like that. Luck of the Irish. Yeah, I like that. So let's do this. And maybe we'll just put this up here. Kind of off to one side. Got a, another one of the cards that is one of my photos of flowers. I think that'll look good right there. All right, so there's another page that we've put together. Let me get the next one set up. This is the last page that we're going to make for this journal. I hope you've enjoyed all of these little tutorials all in one. So for this one, I printed the Calco Collage image once on one side. And what I'm going to do is fussy cut around this area here and kind of a little fussy cut area over here. So I'm just going to use my Fisker scissors and then just kind of not really making it straight because I want some interest into it. I could rip it, but I decided to cut it because I'm going to cut this side. All right. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Just kind of loosely cut it out. All right. Now I have a dictionary Bible page here. And what I'm going to do is take this piece and glue it to this other page. So I'm going to kind of line it up and I'm going to glue it down across all over to this other page. It gives me a foundation to work with when I'm making my pockets and I'm using some junk up. All right, so I've got those glued into place. Now I've got these two pieces. So the next thing I want to do is apply some distress inks to both edges before I forget. I've got laying here another couple of pages of Bible pages, two of them glued, glued back to back. And what I'm going to do is take this corner piece and glue it down so that I can rip this. Now I can do it a couple of different ways. I can try to maximize as much as I can, or I can just tear it and make sure that the whole thing covers the back. It's up to you, whatever you want to do. I think I can get away with doing it like that. So I'm going to glue this piece down over here and then tear it out. And I'm going to glue this piece over here and then tear it out. So I'll just grab one side and then start tearing. All right, so I've torn both pieces out, but I'm going to need to trim this. So I'll just take my scissors and trim it. All right, now I'm going to take some walnut stain and go around this book page edge. So see now we can glue these into place and we have the natural writing space that Norella created, but we've added a pocket where we can tuck more stuff in. All right, so I'm going to glue these down on the two sides. We'll come back to the journal cards that are going here. I'm going to go ahead and flip this over. And for this side, I thought I would use some leftover things that I've had in my stash to decorate the page and just add a little whimsy and color. So here's what I've got. I've got a book page that I had cleaned my dauber off with. And so it ended up with these dots everywhere. And this edge here is kind of fragile. So I'm going to grab some washi tape and just kind of add a little washi tape. You could do a scrap of paper if you want. If your page was wide enough, you could fold over the edge and that would help uh, give you the thickness just to keep it from not tearing so easily. I'm just trimming this to fit and I'm going to glue this down on here where it comes across here and goes down in this way because this is going to become a pocket. And I forgot to do this. I want to fold this page in half so I know where the center mark is so I can put a little bit of glue right here because I know that my book page is a little bit wider. All right, so I got that down and I've got this is a little diagram of flowers and I've put some washi tape on the back and I'm going to glue it down over on this side in the same fashion. And then for this side, I had a scrap that was left over from another project and I thought that would look good up here and maybe I could put this guy down here at the bottom glue him down into place so I'm going to go ahead and glue this as a 
pocket that comes from this way. Who knows? Maybe we'll find something else to stick in there, or whoever gets the journal may be able to put something in that pocket. I had a little bit of this book page left. Let me see. I think if I do something like maybe like this, then it gives the appearance of a pocket and then we could put a journal card in there. So let's apply, let's spray this with some tattered angels. So I'm going to spray it with that hemlock green again. All right, I really saturated it. So I'm going to heat it up and dry it. I'm going to use some distress inks on the edge, kind of give it a little bit darker edge. I think that would look really cute right there. So I'm going to glue that to put it together. I've got the word journal, and I think I want to stamp that where it fits right there. Yeah, I like that. And then I've got I've got a card here. Let's see. Do I want to do that one? I think I like the butterfly. So I'm going to put the butterflies in there. And then I'm going to fold this back in half again. And I've got this little journal card that I want to put over here. And then I've got these two smaller ones from the kit. And I've got a ready-made one from Calico Collage. I'm going to put that in here. I think it's going to stick out. Um, so I'm going to change that. Let me see if this one will fit here. No. Okay. All right. So it'll fit in there, which means I made some cards that are going to go in this pocket. So I'm going to have to make an adjustment. <laughs> All right. So I made this card and I'm going to show you how in just a moment. I guess it's okay if it sticks out just a little bit. It's probably catching. Yeah, that must be what it's doing. It's catching. Okay, good. So we'll go ahead and make this card. So here's what I've got. I've got a five by seven journal card that I've rounded the corners and I've applied distress inks. And now I'm going to take that same journal stamp that we used just a moment ago. It's from that uh, set of four. And let's stamp it right in the corner. And I'm trying to use up this washi tape. So I'm just going to cut or tear really just a little bit longer than the word journal and then put it right underneath. Okay, and then I've got one of the four leaf clovers from the kit. So we'll glue that down and stick that right here. And then I like to put them back to back just so they, when you pull them out, you have a little pattern on both sides. And I think it's still catching. So I'm going to see what I can fix it with. So the paper that I glued down that kind of wrapped around to the other side, I didn't quite get the glue to the very, very edge. And so the cards were hitting it when they went in. So I just put some washi tape over it and really smoothed it out so that now when I put my cards in, they don't catch. Well, actually they are catching. Where are you catching? Ha, huh. right there. All right, one more. I believe I've got it fixed this time. Yes, there it goes. All right. So we made all of our pages. We'll go back through them. Here is this page where we have the journal cards that are two. There's two of them. And then we flip this over and we've got a pocket that we made using the kit and added some journal cards. And then here is another one of the kit journal cards. Flip this over and we have a hidden pocket here. We've got a tuck spot there and a journal card there. So that was the last page we made. Here's the page before that with the mason jar and the washi tape. And then you open it up and you have journaling space in here. Journaling space here. Another journal card. Next page. So we have that beautiful background. So we have that beautiful background and journaling card. And then we open it up and we have some stamping and stenciling inside. And then back here we have a multi-layered pocket that we just tore pages to put in. And then a little tag to go. I like using the dictionary page. So if you can save that for whatever theme you're working on, those are pretty clever. This was a, like a accounting book page that we added the pockets to. 
and then added the journal cards on the inside. Here was my handmade paper where we made a side pocket here. And then we had the index card, which we made into a tech spot and then the card from Calico Collage. And then I liked how I did St. Patty's statement using that little ledger paper, statement paper. And then we showed the stenciling here. This was a mop-up paper of stenciling. And we stamped and added the little words journal. And this was where we sped through the stencil. We used the same concept as the other page with the journal, but we used different sayings. I've got a couple of little stationary pages that I thought would be pretty to stick in the journal. And then I've got the pages that I put together. All right, well, I'm going to get this all laid out to stack together and uh, get it bounced. I'll be right back. I've laid out the pages in the order in which I want to put the journal together. I kind of think of what pages do I want nestled next to each other? Do I want something to repeat and be really close or further away? It's just a aesthetic thing that I like. So I begin with the cover and in my journals, I like to begin with the one of the printed pages. So I'll put that here and then I'll grab the next page. And I'll grab the next page. Now I printed extra of the printed pages. So I'm going to go back and grab one of those right now before I move forward. And then that way I'll have an even distribution of them. And here I've got a small book page or a stationary page. And then I like my center page to be something fun and bright. So I picked that. I'm getting out my junk journal tools. So I like to keep all this put together so I know where it is. I've got a couple of these large paper clips. And then I have a book binders needle. I sell these in my shop. They're two for $5. They're really strong. They have the narrow eye so you don't make a giant hole. And then I've got some wax linen thread. My template, I just fold it up and put it in there. It's got washi tape holding it together. It's probably time to make a new one. And then I've got my craft pick. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make sure that my pages are all lined up in the order that I want them. They're, you know, even from top to bottom. Make any adjustments. Okay. All right. I think that's good. So I'm just going to use the giant paper clip to hold the book together. I like how that handmade paper sticks out the edges. Come on, paper clip. All right. So I've got those together. I'm going to take my template and put it right down the center. I'm going to V my book up. I'm going to use the craft pick. It's an awl to poke three holes for a pamphlet stitch. I want to keep my pages V'd up while I press the hole through because if you don't, your pages won't be nestled together properly. I like that I can close that up and fold it away and then put it back into my little bag. So I'm going to get three times the height of the journal in wax linen thread. One, two and three and I'll just go ahead and cut it free so it's easier to work with. For our pamphlet stitch I like to start in the middle on the inside and grab the little tail and hold it up out of the way. Might help if I do that correctly. There we go. And then go in the center hole. From here you can go uh, either way if you want to go through the bottom or the top. I'm going to go through the bottom this time just because that's where my fingers are. And I'm going to push through to this side, making sure this little tail is out of the way. I'm going to pull this a little bit tight so it moves out of that hole. And then I'm going to go back through that center hole, trying not to split this thread. If you split it, meaning the thread and the needle gets tangled up together, it's hard to tighten the journal. So I'm going to come back around to the outside, back to the inside. And then I take this piece and slip it up underneath and then pull in opposite directions. Check to make sure that it's tight on the inside and the outside. And then tie a square knot or a surgeon's knot. And then I'll remove the paper clips. I cut my strings a little long. I'll leave them that way. If someone wants to add charms to it, they can. Because sometimes they like to add little things. Maybe they pick up a charm or something. And then I'm going to sign it in the very back. And I'll flip through it really fast to show you what it looks like. 
people always ask me, you know, you show us the journal pages, but I've never really paid attention to where, what it looks like in the journal. So here's what it looks like. So we've got the printed page or cover, the first printed page. And then here is a collage corner that I made. There's the other side. Then we've got the little weekending paste stub type thing. It's a little crooked, it looks like, but you know, that's part of the charm, handmade. We've got the little journal cards here because we've sprinkled the kit all throughout. Almost all the pages have something on or near the, you know, page that matches the kit. And see how just using different colors, you know, of the green go together using different patterns together. I don't think this is neat. Even though it doesn't have anything to do about shamrocks, you've got pictures of flowers and they're just pretty. And then the journal cards we made. It's a journal card that I made in a live stream a couple of weeks back. Not that I would use it in here today. A couple of the cards from the kit. I like the way the pockets come together. Oh yeah, and here's another journal card that's part of the kit. And this was from a butterfly journal kit that Norella offers in her shop. This was using the Queen Anne's Lace. I forgot to say that on here. I didn't put anything on the back side of these pages. I figured let, let whoever gets the journal have their own little decoration that they can add. I like these little collages, how they came together. And I like that this accidentally got the spray on it. It just kind of makes me feel like it's just vintage. It was laying on my desk, you know, and, and got messy while I was creating or while I was writing in it. And then this page with our wonky little shamrocks or clovers, a little pocket. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial that uh, you got a little, a little bit of luck of Irish with you today. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. You know, I go live on Mondays at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time. And again, on Thursdays at 12.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Monday, I make journals just like I did in this tutorial today. It just takes a little bit more work for me to record and get it edited. So that's why I do the live streams. And then on Thursdays, I do mixed media. We'll do things for like gel printing, direct to paper with paint. We'll make things out of those pages like envelopes and bookmarks and journal pages and journal covers. So hopefully you'll come join us, hang out with us. And I also give away prizes too during my live streams. Do check the description box below for links for my blog, as well as the Friendly Junk Journal People Facebook group, as well as Calico Collage and all the products that I use today. If you have any questions, use that comment box down below. And again, thank you so much for watching. Y'all have a fabulous day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Bye. <music>